So there are no shortage of what's in my camera bag videos on YouTube from content creators like myself. And if you're anything like me, you've probably been up in the wee hours of the morning or night, can't go to sleep with your phone in front of you watching videos just like this. So this is my camera bag video, what's in my camera bag 2020 edition. Now a little bit of a disclaimer, these are actually things that I use day in and day out to do all of my photography, videography, and graphic design. It's also important to note that you don't need everything that I have in my bag, and this is not something that is a one and done type of thing. I feel like these what's in my camera bag videos are just a snapshot of what it is that people are using right now in this season of our creative lives. So right now this is a snapshot of what it looks like in my bag every single day. So without further ado, in order to do one of the what's in my camera bag videos, you have to have a camera bag. And this is my bag of choice. This is the Brevity Scout version two. This bag is incredible. I had the version one, uh, had some issues with it and they have since addressed them with the version two and I am loving it so far. It's made out of this really great material. I don't even know what it is. I'll just call it black magic <laughs> to where it just looks sleek, has like that nice matte finish. And not only that, but it's also moisture resistant. I've had this thing in the rain. I've had it in the snow and it has held up beautifully. None of my stuff got damaged or wet. And I gotta say it's got pockets for days and a lot of the functionality that I really need in a bag. So let's dive in. First on the side, we have the Joby Gorillapod. This is the 3K version, I believe. Also, I'm gonna have links in the description for you to find any of these products to check them out for yourself, if you're so inclined. Joby Gorillapod. This thing, if you're a YouTuber, you kind of have to have one. This is the perfect, you know, vlogging, vlog, vlogging? <laughs> this perfect vlogging setup where you have your camera at arm's length. It really is nice to be able to put it down wherever you want. I also have additional one of these like mounts that I use for my phone many times for when I'm doing like Instagram stories and I don't want to hold my phone with my arm and get tired, which sometimes makes me feel weak because I'm like, why is this phone so stinking heavy? But really it's just my arms weak. So yeah, feel bad for me there. <laughs> so Gorillapod, you have to have one of these if you're a YouTuber. I think it's actually part of the law and it's in like their user rights and agreements. So I don't know, you can fact check me on that. So that lives in one of these great side pockets, which there's two on this bag, one on each side. I use these for, as you can tell, the Gorilla Pod. I use it for my water bottle. I will also use this for a travel tripod if I'm needing it. Just really great functionality overall. I'm gonna flip the bag over. And this is really where the magic happens. On the back side, one design that I really love on this bag is it has this nice luggage uh, strap. I, I guess where you can just put it through the handles on your luggage, you can take the weight off of your back. Makes it really great for traveling. Has a little secret passport compartment that I'm not using currently. Now getting to the guts of the bag. All right, so inside of this bag is part of what I'm using for my gear day in and day out. Disclosure too, on some of these items that I use them for work, I don't necessarily own them, but they are still a part of my kit and they come with me day in and day out with what I do. First thing first, in the top strap, we have the 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is rocking the fish skin 
skin <laughs> on the MacBook, uh, top and bottom. Absolutely have been loving this machine for a very, very long time. I was operating with a 2011 MacBook Pro, which honestly suited a lot of my graphic design needs for the most part. But as I got into more video editing on the go, I needed something with a little bit more horsepower. This honestly isn't even the best 13 inch model. It was just a really good buy at the time. Um, and it works really well with Final Cut, which I'm a Final Cut editor and user. And so it's just been really great for me. And then the fish skin, not only does it look cool, but it's very protective. I can actually attest to this. I was with some friends, uh, my wife and I, Rachel, we were on a trip coming back from snowboarding. We were in our friend's truck and some crazy hooligan decided to cut us off. My friend had to slam on the brakes because he was a safe defensive driver as you should be. And my MacBook, which I was doing work on, just went <laughs> totally flying to the floor of the truck and it hit uh, the siding of some things, but it's held up fine. It only damaged the uh, skin, so I'm loving this thing so far. Um, highly, highly recommend. All right, starting with the Sony a7 III. This is my main camera. I am a Sony shooter. I have my friend Ben Johnson creative to blame for my love of Sony's. Uh, and <laughs> I actually am thankful that he got me introduced into them. Um, I really love this camera. It's just great. There's tons of videos on this thing. It's been out for almost, I think like two years now. It just does great photo, great video. I needed a mixture of both and I wanted something that could do both really well. And so the a7 III does it for me. I also love the 4K. I love the battery life that it has. Just can't say enough good things about it. Some quirks, but I can work with it. Moving on to my second camera and my first camera that I owned ever was this one. This is the Sony A6300. You heard me right, the 6300. The uh, small batteries that it uses, the way it overheats, the weird colors that it has inside of it. With all of its faults, I love this thing. It's been really great. Still to this day, the video quality that you can get out of it is actually really good. You can manipulate the colors if you know a little bit about your scopes and everything. Um, I, just, I just absolutely love it. This is the first camera I bought and I bought it used and it's still kicking to this day. You'll notice that I do have one of these small rig cages with a little bit of a wooden handle. Main reason is, is that this actually helps to dissipate some of the heating, overheating issues that you have with these cameras. But not only that, I put the wooden handle on it because it just kind of helps to get a little bit of a grip because otherwise these cameras can be very, very tiny and small and not the easiest to handle. Uh, I also added on an additional uh, cold shoe mount in case I want to mount a light or uh, extra microphone or you know whatever kind of accessories. So loving this, still loving this camera and uh, love the cage that's on it too. So to the lenses that I mainly use, this lens right here, love this lens. This is the Sony 35 millimeter 1.8. This is a relatively new lens from Sony. Honestly, on paper, there's really not a lot to write home about this. 35 millimeters uh, becoming my favorite focal length, but f1.8 is not a huge deal to some, especially for the price that you pay for this lens. It's a little pricey, but it has the new focusing motor from Sony. It's got a function button on it, which I love. It's got a nice autofocus and manual focus switch on it, which is just really great because I don't always have to go into the camera settings and change that. This thing is sharp, sharp, sharp. I love this lens. It does have some chromatic aberration, a little bit of purple fringing in some areas, but overall, bang for buck, this is my Instagram lens. This is the one I'm using for pretty much everything as much as I can. I absolutely love this lens, and I think it's worth every penny. Moving on to some other lenses. We have here, I gotta say this is one of my work lenses, but this is the 70 to 200 f4 lens now the beautiful thing about this lens is that 
optically, it's amazing. Not only that, it's got built-in stabilization, which is really helpful when you're really pushed in all the way to 200 millimeters. It just looks really stinking good. Even at F4, you can still get a real great amount of compression on video. It translates beautifully. Can't say enough good things about this lens. This is just another thing that my friend Ben Johnson got me hooked on. Just because the 2.8 is great, it's, I feel like it's almost like double the price, but the weight that you save your, your back and your shoulders by using this lens, and if you're not always in a low light situation, this lens is great. Plus these Sony cameras are pretty great in low light. So that with F4, I can manage with it. It works for me. If I ever need to be a sharpshooter, sniper, Jason Bourne, shooter, shooter McGavin, if I need to get a shot from far away, this is the lens and it works really great. For my A6300, I use this lens and this is one that I would recommend as a great all around lens. This is the Sony uh, 18 105 F4. This is another G series lens. Has a nice little tight and wide little rocker there. Some satisfying sounds. Uh, I love this lens. Optically, it's just another beautiful lens. It's very lightweight. I love the zoom is internal. All about it. I just love this lens. Really great. Again, and if you can work with F4, which I think in a lot of lighting scenarios, it's good. Low light, not so much, but pretty much for everything else, I'm going to be using this lens. Moving on to a little bit of a wild card, we have the Helios 44-258 millimeter f2.0, I believe. I said that right, it's a little bit of a mouthful. If you wanna learn more about this lens, I have a video that you can check out up here somewhere. It's a great lens, manual focusing, it's vintage, it's all metal construction, it's made super well. It's got a manual aperture ring, it's got manual focus, which is great for these mirrorless cameras because you have focus peaking that helps to get that image nice and sharp. Not only that, but this lens does not have any special coatings like these nice new fancy lenses do. And because of that, you get these crazy flares whenever you're using lighting properly and whenever the sunlight's really coming into to it and it looks incredible. It's just something that you can't recreate with these modern lenses. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. It just kind of depends on what I'm going for. I don't use this lens all the time. It's really nice in low lights. Sometimes there are some contrast issues, but the bokeh that you get, the swirliness in the background, the flares, it's just great to have if you're ever feeling like extra creative and you want to get into uh, some of those vintage vibes. This is the one to get underneath here. We have the B-Way SD card uh, holder, just a variety of SD cards. Gotta have it, just a good way to protect your cards. So that takes care of the portion of the camera cube here. Now we move up top and we have just other accessories and stuff that I need to help do my job. Uh, we have sensor cleaner. This is something that everybody needs. It's good to have cleaning off your sensors. We have batteries on batteries and I have a ton more of these batteries. These are for the APS-C camera, the smaller one. You have to have a ton of these. If you have an A63, 64, six bajillion, hundred, whatever it is, you have to have a lot of these batteries. Just one of the downsides that you have to work with with that camera. So got some batteries. Then I have a couple of the bigger batteries for the a7 III. I can't even say enough good things about these batteries. Absolutely love them. In fact, too, these are actually knockoff batteries. I saw a great video from Caleb over at DSLR Video Shooter where he broke down the different battery life of some of these uh, third-party batteries. These are the best ones. I'll link it. You can take a look for yourself. Good stuff. Have a little microfiber cloth. You gotta have something to just clean your sensor. Moving on, we have in here Samsung T5. I use this all the time for videos, even photo editing, um, basically just to do all my work off of because it's such a fast drive. Even though I have a solid state drive in my computer, I just love to have it offloaded and then I can transfer this between computers if I need to. Can't say enough good things about this T5. This one here is the one terabyte edition. Love, love, love it. Super compact and very durable. No issues with it like you do with the standard mechanical drive. So love that. 
I have one of these fun little guys. This is a Pergo little dongle situation that I have to have for my MacBook Pro. If you're a new MacBook Pro user with like the newer models, you just know it's about that dongle life. This one here has two USB-C, two USB-A, SD card reader, micro SD card reader, and an HDMI output. I can charge, I can transfer data at the same time, and it's nice and compact. I just like that I can throw it in the bag and just bring it with me wherever I go. So if you have to live the dongle life, you might as well do it this way. And finally, what I have in here are just some of these doTERRA um, oils, these on guard beadlets that my mom got me. Uh, if I'm feeling a little froggy, I'll pop a few of these in and, you know, helps me feel a little bit better. So, moving on. <laughs> I wanna move on to the next portion of this bag. Now, going top side here, you can open this guy up to reveal even more storage. We have in here my MacBook Pro charger, which I actually stole the old cable to the wall outlet from my 2011 MacBook because I didn't like the little attachment. Urgh. The little attachment that goes here, that means like you have to plug this huge brick of a piece into the wall. So I snagged my old like, whatever it is, three or four foot cable. So that way, if I'm at a coffee shop or if I'm somewhere in an office and I'm not anywhere close to an outlet, I can just use this plug and uh, put it to good use. I also use these little leather ties on some of my stuff just to keep it nice and tidy. I have, this here is my Peak Design strap for my camera. If you don't know anything about these Peak Design straps in the system, these things are great. I absolutely love it. If you're constantly having to put on and take off a camera strap for your needs, look into Peak Design. It's just the easiest and simplest way to do it. it saves you a bunch of time and effort, so it's all good stuff. Then we have the Rode Video Micro, I think that's what this guy is. Anyway, small little road mic. I absolutely love this thing. I've seen a ton of videos that do like audio tests between this mic, which I think is around $50 with mics that are $200, sometimes north of that or south. This thing doesn't require any power, no batteries. All you do is plug it into the camera and it sounds really, really great, probably for like 95% of people. So highly recommend this mic. Comes with a little dead cat. That's what this is. I'm not saying kill cats. Does a job. Cuts down on the wind with the dead cat on there. So it's all good there. Then moving to the top, this section, we have a few slots, a couple of pockets, has like one of these nice little key straps. I'll use this whenever I'm traveling. I'm not gonna be anywhere near my car. And then there's pockets for pins and things. I have a little notebook here for writing things down. I do still keep some of these Apple headphones. These are really good for just monitoring audio, especially on the a7 III, just so that way I can check levels. I'm not really going for like sound quality or clarity, just basically to make sure that I'm not peaking and that there's no sort of weird inconsistencies in the audio whenever I'm recording. So these are definitely a good little help. Moving over to the front side of the bag, there's a couple of other little pockets. So in this one, I keep the Apple AirPods, these are not the Pro or the Max or whatever they're calling the AirPods now. This is, uh, however, the version two where they did like small upgrades. I didn't think that I would love AirPods as much as I do, but especially with the driving that I do going around, I have to be hands-free my phone in California. So these guys are a lifesaver. Plus, you know, just makes you look official whenever you're on a phone call, or maybe you just have them in and you don't want to talk to people right now because you're a little introverted like myself. AirPods. <laughs> And then also in here, I have these glasses. I just keep some sunglasses with me all the time. These look really nice, but they're actually like 20 bucks or something on Amazon. So it's a good find. My wife got them for me, so I love them even more. And that's really it. So ladies and gentlemen, we've really reached the end of this video. And I really hope that you take away, not just that 
you know, hey, these are cool things or I wish I had that, but just to inspire you of maybe some things that you wanna consider for your own creative needs in the future. I would also say too that this did not happen overnight. This has been a long process, but it's stuff that I use every day in order to get the creative job done. But I'd say this though, it's not so much about the gear that you have, it's just what you have and how you use it. Just, I feel like as creatives, I lost my life. I feel as creatives that really we're just problem solvers. We take the things that we have and then we put them to use. And so use this bag as inspiration. It's this thing's gonna be ever growing and uh, evolving over time, just like I'm gonna be evolving and growing here as a creator. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing if you have not yet. Also hit the notification bell so that way you get updated whenever new videos are posted by yours truly. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up helps to let me know that you enjoy it and that it helps the algorithm too. So, you know, that's all good stuff. Also comment down below, what's in your camera bag? What's your favorite piece of gear that you have in your bag? Do you have a camera bag? If not, what's a bag that you're looking to buy? Leave it down below. Thanks for tuning into this video. Again, my name is Zach Sopak. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Cool.